In the grand theater of the universe, where stars are born and galaxies dance in the dark, there exists a tiny, unassuming world, a pale blue dot suspended in a sunbeam. This is Earth, our home. But its story is anything but ordinary. It's a saga of chaos and rebirth, of cataclysmic violence and delicate miracles, a tale that stretches back over 4.5 billion years. Today, we journey back to the very beginning to answer one of humanity's oldest questions. How was planet Earth born? Picture this, a newborn sun, raging in the center of a swirling disk of gas and dust. Around it, fragments of rock and metal clash in a cosmic demolition derby. This is the chaotic construction site of our solar system. And in this maelstrom, Earth began as a speck, a mere pebble in the void. But how did this speck become the vibrant, life-filled world we know today? To understand Earth's birth, we must first unravel the secrets of the universe itself. Our story doesn't start with Earth. It begins 13.8 billion years ago, with the Big Bang, a singularity of infinite heat and density, that ignited the universe. From that primordial fireball, matter spread outward, cooling and clumping into galaxies, stars, and the raw ingredients of planets. But Earth's ingredients weren't just stardust, they were stardust forged in the hearts of dying stars. Supernova, the universe's grand alchemists, cooked elements like carbon, iron, and gold, scattering them across space. Fast forward 9 billion years, a nondescript cloud of gas and dust drifts in the spiral arm of the Milky Way. This cloud, our solar nebula, is the womb of Earth, but its tranquility is shattered, when a nearby supernova sends a shockwave rippling through it. The cloud collapses under its own gravity, spinning faster and faster until nuclear fusion ignites at its core. A star is born, our sun. Round it, the leftover material forms a vast, swirling disk, a nursery for planets. In this disk, specks of dust collide, stick together, and grow into mountain-sized rocks called planetesimals. These are the seeds of planets. Over millions of years, they crash, merge, and compete for dominance. In the inner solar system, where temperatures are scorching, only metals and silicates survive, the building blocks of rocky worlds like Earth. But this is no gentle process. It's a brutal, violent ballet, a game of gravitational pinball, where winners become planets and losers are cast into oblivion. And so, Earth begins to take shape. But this early Earth is nothing like the blue marble we cherish. It's a hellish wasteland, a molten sphere of magma, bombarded by asteroids, comets, and rogue planetesimals. The largest of these collisions comes from a Mars-sized object named Thea. Its impact is so colossal that it blasts Earth's surface into space, creating a ring of debris that will coalesce into our moon. For over 500 million years, Earth remains a fiery inferno, a time scientists call the Hadean Aeon, named after Hades, the Greek god of the underworld. But even in this chaos, the foundations of life are being laid. Volcanoes spew gases, forming a primitive atmosphere. Water, delivered by icy comets, begins to condense. And deep within Earth's core, a magnetic field stirs to life, a shield that will one day protect all living things. Slowly, the planet cools. Magma solidifies into a crust. Rain falls for millennia, filling vast basins to create the first oceans. Continents rise and shift. The stage is set for Earth's greatest act, the emergence of life. But that's a story for another day. Today, we focus on the birth of the stage itself, the epic transformation from cosmic debris to a living world. What makes Earth's story so extraordinary isn't just its scale, it's the improbability. A thousand chance events had to align perfectly. A slightly different orbit, a delayed collision, a missing element in Earth might have remained a barren rock. Yet here we are, standing on the product of 4.5 billion years of cosmic craftsmanship. So let's rewind the clock, back to the very first chapter, and witness how our planet rose from the ashes of the stars. Our journey begins not with Earth but with the death of the stars that made it possible. To understand Earth's birth, we must first step into the universe's workshop. Our story begins 13.8 billion years ago, with a cosmic event so profound it shaped everything we know, the Big Bang. In a fraction of a second, space itself exploded outward, carrying with it all the energy, matter, and time, that would ever exist. But this newborn universe was simple, a soup of hydrogen, helium, and radiation. No stars, no planets, no ingredients for life yet. For 200 million years, the universe expanded and cooled. Gravity began tugging at subtle ripples in the gas, pulling hydrogen and helium into dense knots. Inside these knots, pressure and heat ignited nuclear fusion, the first stars were born. These pioneers, called population III stars, were titans. Hundreds of times more massive than our sun, they burned ferociously and died young. Death, 
however, was their greatest gift. When these stars exhausted their fuel, they detonated as supernova, cosmic alchemists, that forged heavier elements in their final moments. Carbon, oxygen, iron, gold all the atoms that make up our bodies, and our planet were cooked in stellar furnaces and blasted into space. This stardust mingled with interstellar gas, enriching future generations of stars and planets. Without these explosions, Earth, and life itself, would never exist. Over billions of years, generations of stars lived and died, each contributing new elements to the cosmic reservoir. Gas clouds grew heavier, denser, and more complex. Among these was the Milky Way, our galaxy, a sprawling disk of 100 billion stars. But one ordinary cloud, drifting in its spiral arm, held a secret. Within it lay the raw materials for a star and a pale blue dot, that would one day call itself Earth. This cloud, our solar nebula, was a relic of destruction. Carried the ashes of countless supernovae, the remnants of ancient stellar collisions, and ice forged in the cold depths of interstellar space. For eons, it drifted undisturbed until a shockwave from a nearby supernova sent ripples through its calm. Gravity took over. The cloud began to collapse, spinning faster as it shrank. At its center, temperatures soared to millions of degrees, and hydrogen atoms fused, igniting a star. Our sun? Around the infant sun, the remaining material flattened into a vast, swirling disk, a protoplanetary disk. Here, in this chaotic nursery, the ingredients for planets mingled, silicates, metals, ice, and organic molecules. Tiny dust grains collided, clung together, and grew into pebbles, then boulders, then mountains. These planetismals, the seeds of planets, were the next chapter in Earth's story. But their journey would be written in fire and collisions. In the next chapter, we'll descend into the chaos of the early solar system, a time when worlds were forged in chaos, and Earth fought to survive. In the heart of our solar nebula, chaos reigned. The infant sun, now burning fiercely, lashed its surroundings with solar winds and radiation. Yet within this maelstrom, order began to emerge. The remaining gas and dust flattened into a spinning disk, a celestial carousel stretching millions of miles. Here, in this frenzied nursery, the seeds of planets took root. It started with dust. Tiny particles, no larger than sand, danced in the disk's currents. Electrostatic forces glued them together, forming pebbles. These pebbles collided, stuck, and grew, some into boulders, others into mountain-sized planetismals. Gravity now joined the fray, pulling these rocky bodies into violent mergers. Winners grew larger, losers were shattered or swallowed. In the inner disk, near the sun's scorching glare, only metals and silicates could withstand the heat. These resilient materials forged the rocky planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Farther out, in the frosty reaches, ice mingled with dust, birthing gas giants like Jupiter, a gravitational titan whose birth likely stunted Mars' growth. But this was no orderly assembly line. The disk boiled with turbulence. Young planets migrated, jostling for position. Jupiter's immense gravity hurled asteroids inward, bombarding the inner worlds. Meanwhile, Saturn's formation pulled Jupiter back, saving Earth's future from further chaos. Over 10 million years, the largest planetesimals dominated their orbits, clearing paths through the disk. Earth's precursor, a Mars-sized embryo, grew by devouring rivals. Yet its final act of creation would come from destruction, a cataclysmic collision with Thea, a rogue planetesimal. That birth at our moon and sealed Earth's fate, as a world unlike any other. Earth's birth was not a gentle gathering of cosmic dust, it was a battle for survival. In the inner solar system, dozens of Mars-sized protoplanets circled the Sun, their orbits crisscrossing in a deadly game of gravitational roulette. Among them, a fledgling Earth grew by devouring its neighbors. Over millions of years, Earth absorbed smaller planetesimals, each collision releasing enough energy to liquefy its surface. These impacts were apocalyptic, raising temperatures to thousands of degrees, vaporizing rock, and churning the young planet into a seething magma ocean. Yet this violence had purpose. With each merger, Earth's mass grew, its gravity strengthening, its destiny solidifying. But Earth's most defining moment came from a cataclysm. A wayward protoplanet, Thea, roughly the size of Mars, drifted into Earth's orbit. The collision was inevitable. Striking at 15 kilometers per second, Thea's impact was so colossal it vaporized both worlds' crusts and mantles, blasting a torrent of molten debris into space. In the aftermath, Earth's remains swirled in orbit, a ring of superheated rock and metal. Within weeks, gravity sculpted this debris into a new body our moon. This collision left Earth spinning faster, its day just five hours long, and tilted its axis, 
a quirk that would later give rise to seasons, but it also stripped Earth of its primordial atmosphere, resetting the clock for its future. The newborn Earth was unrecognizable for 500 million years. During the Hadean Eon, its surface was a nightmare. Asteroids and comets rained down, reigniting magma oceans. Volcanoes spewed toxic gases, methane, ammonia, and carbon dioxide into a thin, scorching atmosphere. Yet, amid the chaos, Earth's fate was being sealed. Heavy metals like iron sank inward, forming its core, while lighter minerals rose, creating a brittle crust. Slowly, the bombardment eased. Earth's surface cooled, hardening into a patchwork of rocky plates. Water vapor, trapped in molten rock, burst forth in volcanic eruptions, condensing into the first acidic rains. These rains fell for millennia filling basins to form Earth's earliest oceans. The stage was set for a miracle, but first, Earth needed to heal. Next, we witness Earth's transformation, from a molten inferno to a world with continents, oceans, and the first whispers of life. From the ashes of its violent birth, Earth began to reinvent itself. The bombardment slowed, the magma oceans cooled, and deep within, the planet embarked on a transformative journey, a process called differentiation, where Earth would carve itself into layers, setting the stage for everything to come. As temperatures dropped, heavier elements like iron and nickel succumbed to gravity's pull sinking toward the center. This molten river of metal pooled into Earth's core, a seething, liquid outer core surrounding a solid inner core. This metallic heart would one day generate Earth's magnetic field, a shield against solar winds. Above it, buoyant silicates rose, forming a thick mantle of semi-solid rock. And atop the mantle, a thin, brittle crust began to solidify, a fractured mosaic of early continents. But Earth's surface remained a nightmare. Volcanoes erupted non-stop, belching gases like water vapor, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen into the atmosphere. This process, called alkacing, birthed Earth's primordial air, a toxic, suffocating blanket. Yet hidden in this poison was a promise, water vapor. Over time, it condensed into clouds, unleashing rainstorms that lasted millennia. The first oceans were born in fire and acid. Rainwater mixed with volcanic sulfur, creating corrosive pools. But as Earth cooled, these pools deepened, neutralizing into vast, lifeless seas. Meanwhile, the crust thickened and cracked, forming tectonic plates, though they lay dormant, waiting for their time to reshape the world. Differentiation did more than create layers, it gave Earth rhythm. The liquid outer core's churning generated a magnetic field, deflecting deadly solar radiation. The mantle's slow convection currents began to stir, priming the engine of plate tectonics. And the crust, though fragile, became a canvas for future continents. By four billion years ago, Earth's face had changed. No longer a molten hell, it now had a solid crust, salty oceans, and a murky atmosphere. But the air remained unbreathable, a mix of carbon dioxide and nitrogen, with no oxygen. Life's arrival was still a distant dream. Yet Earth was now a world of contrasts, fiery depths and icy comets, boiling seas and barren rock, a world poised for reinvention. The first revolution began beneath Earth's crust. The mantle's heat, trapped since the planet's formation, finally broke free. Convection currents stirred the molten rock, fracturing the brittle crust into plates. These plates began to move, sliding, colliding, diving. Mountains surged skyward. Oceans widened. Subduction zones recycled carbon, stabilizing the climate. Plate tectonics had awakened, a process unique to Earth and perhaps essential for life. The second revolution brewed in the oceans. Around 3.8 billion years ago, hydrothermal vents on the seafloor became cauldrons of chemistry. Minerals rich in iron, sulfur, and nickel mingled with seawater, creating complex molecules. Some scientists believe these vents incubated Earth's first life, but that spark was still millennia away. For now, the oceans grew richer, their chemistry priming the planet for a biologic Big Bang.12. The third revolution was biologic and accidental. Round to 0.7 billion years ago, cyanobacteria, simple, blue-green microbes, began harnessing sunlight to make food, their waste product, oxygen. For millions of years, this oxygen reacted with iron in the oceans, rusting into sediments. But when the iron ran out, oxygen flooded the atmosphere, a catastrophe for anaerobic life, but a miracle for our future. This great oxidation event, to point for billion years ago, was Earth's most dramatic machiover. Oxygen levels soared, sculpting an ozone layer that shielded the surface from deadly UV radiation. Aerobic organisms flourished. The stage was now set for complex life, 
but Earth wasn't done yet. The fourth revolution was climatic. Between 720 and 635 million years ago, Earth froze, repeatedly. Glaciers stretched to the equator, turning the planet into a snowball. Yet volcanoes pierced the ice, spewing CO to that built up until it triggered catastrophic warming. These freeze-thaw cycles eroded rocks, flushing nutrients into the oceans and supercharging evolution. By 540 million years ago, Earth was ready. Oxygen-rich oceans teemed with minerals. Stable climates allowed life to experiment. In a burst of creativity called the Cambrian Explosion, evolution unleashed an arc of complex organisms. Eyes, shells, predators, prey, the rules of biology were rewritten. Earth, at last, had become a living world. Next, we confront life's fragile origins, and how Earth's extremes nurtured its first sparks. From stardust to a living world, Earth's story is a testament to cosmic patience and chaos. Over 4.5 billion years, it endured supernova, violent collisions, and frozen wastelands, each catastrophe a stepping stone toward the vibrant planet we call home. But what does this epic saga tell us about our place in the universe? Earth is rare, perhaps unique, for every habitable world. There are countless dead ones, scorched by their stars, frozen in darkness, or shattered by impacts. Life emerged here not because the universe intended it, but because Earth survived a gauntlet of disasters. The right star, the right distance, the right moon, the right chemistry. A thousand coincidences aligned to turn rock and water into a cradle for consciousness. Yet humility is the lesson of this story. We are newcomers. For 99.9% .9 of Earth's history, humans did not exist. Dinosaurs ruled for 165 million years. We've walked upright for a mere 300,000. Our civilizations, a blink in geologic time. The atoms in our bodies, forged in dying stars, sculpted by Earth's fires, are ancient. We are the universe contemplating itself, but we are not its center. Earth's fragility is its grandeur. The ozone layer shielding us, the magnetic field guarding us, the tectonic cycles feeding us, all are the work of billions of years. Yet these systems are delicate. In a few centuries, we've altered climates, emptied oceans, and reshaped landscapes. The same forces that built Earth can be undone by ignorance. 